Hey everyone, it's Mark from Morsels by Mark. I'm in the Cake Studio today working on a new project for a tutorial that I want to submit to the Marvelous Molds tutorial page. If you haven't checked that out yet, after this video, make sure to check it out on their website, MarvelousMolds.com. Just click on Tutorials and you'll see a section that says Cake Tutorials. And there's a bunch of great tutorials in there by other cake artists and myself showing you how to use Marvelous Molds products to get different looks than you might think are possible. So today what we're going to be doing is I figured instead of just doing a pictorial part of the tutorial on the chalice that I'm going to stick on top of the cake, I'm actually going to go ahead and show you how to do it by video. So let's get started. To do this project you're going to need a few things. You're going to first need a styrofoam ball that you've cut in half. You're also going to need a styrofoam egg shape. You can decide on what sizes you need based on the size project you're doing. And you're going to end up taking the plastic off of this and you're going to cut it in half and you'll see later what it looks like. You're going to need a fondant smoother. You're going to need some gum paste or fondant actually. This is a gold colored fondant. To get this I started with a pound of virgin ice ivory with two drops of Lux Golden Yellow and one drop of their um, brown color and I kneaded it all together. The reason why I want to start with a gold fondant is it'll take the gold paint a lot better later on. Then my topiary is going to use hydrangea so we're going to use the medium sized petaliers mold. We are going to do some decorative work on our chalice um, from the topiary, so we're going to use the Flourish centerpiece mold, the Etude border mold from the New Royal Garden collection, as well as the Fanfare medallion mold from the same Royal Garden collection. You're going to need a knife, a cornstarch puff, a rolling pin, some toothpicks, some paint brushes to attach your pieces and to paint them. You're going to need a needle tool to take all the empty space out of your molds, some vodka to make our paint, and the powdered luster dust of your preference. I'm going with a gold topper to go in with my theme on my cake. So I'm using Wedding Gold by The Sugar Art, and it's a sterling pearl dust. So I just want to show you guys how easy it is to unmold the Marvelous Molds border um, molds. What I've got here is the Etude Royal Garden Collection Border Mold. I've gone and put my gold gum paste or fondant in there. I lightly coated the mold with some cornstarch, which I always keep in a knee-high from the dollar store. They're perfect for using as cornstarch puffs. I've also gone in and pressed down and cut all the extra material away with my fondant smoother. And now I'm just going to flip this over and very carefully peel back my mold away from my piece. Now keep in mind I'm using my cell phone to film this so it's not coming out as perfect as it could because it is moving around but there we go. You've got a really nice detailed piece ready to go onto your chalice and I use this at the top of the um, cup part you can see on the mold is probably easier to see than on the finished piece probably. But you can see you've got this straight edge and then this nice scalloped edge. What I did is I lined the straight edge up with the cut edge of my styrofoam. And that'll help you get it on there nice and straight. Now what's really great about Marvelous Molds products is they're very versatile. You don't have to use them for the design that they're actually started with. And what I mean by that is, you can see here, what I've done is I've cut my egg shape in half and I've covered it in fondant. The narrow top part is actually on the bottom of my chalice and then the wider goblet part is actually the bottom of the egg shape. So if I grab an extra egg, sorry for my finger there, you can see what I'm talking about. So there's the bottom of the egg and there's the top. And I've just like shaved off the ends to make them flat. And they're held together with just a little bit of gum glue or piping gel if you like. And a couple of toothpicks. And then 
But what I do is I use some shortening to cover my styrofoam with. That helps seal in any air pockets that are in the styrofoam. You know how it can be picky? That'll actually fill it in and make it smooth so you get a nicer finish when you fond into your work. And so what I've done is I've used the Flourish centerpiece mold. And instead of doing it right side up, like this, just so you can see, instead of putting it on my piece this way, the way that it's designed, I've actually flipped it upside down to give myself a bit of a different look to it. And one goes right around the base of this chalice, except in the back, I needed to fill in a gap. So what I've done is I've just gone in and filled in the center part here. And there's a lot of how-to videos on how to use these. The best ones, you can find them right on the Marvelous Molds website. I definitely recommend going and checking them out and getting a feel for how the different products are used. There's a great video on how to use the swirl molds. I recommend it immensely. So the other thing I've done to get ready for this, just to save some time, there's the front, is I've gone and used the Etude border just at the top to add a bit more um, visual interest to the piece. So now what we're going to do is we are going to mold the medallion just so you get an idea of how to mold if you don't want to watch any of the other videos. Just put a little bit of cornstarch on my working surface. There is my gold colored fondant. I'm just going to knead it a bit. It's about the size that I want in my piece. There's my mold right here. I'm just going to put a little bit of cornstarch inside. Tap out the excess. That will just keep it from sticking. And then I'm going to put in my fondant, press it down into the mold so I can get a lot of definition. I want to be able to see everything. And you can see how it's like hollow in there. I want it to be a flat back. So I'm just going to, oops, start with that. Take my excess and bring it into the middle just to give it a bit more girth. Then I'm going to take a bit more cornstarch on the back and using my fondant smoother I'm going to press down and just turn and what's great about the Marvelous Molds products is they all have that patented cutting blade that you don't find in any other mold and it helps really give you a nice clean finished piece. And by using my fondant smoother, not only am I cutting my edges and trimming it, I'm actually pressing down at the same time and getting the definition into my piece. So let's just slowly unmold it here. And you want to, for the most part, there you can see how gorgeous that is, all the detail that's in there very minimal effort. And that's what I love about the Marvelous Molds products is you get great details every time no matter what you're using. Um, if it's a lace mold, a border mold, a swirl mold, you always get that great casting to it. So what I'm going to do now is I want to put this on the front of my piece. So I'm going to flip it over and using a little bit of piping gel and a flat paintbrush. I'm just going to attach it to the front. Now I'm using piping gel for this um, because it's a heavier piece I want it to stick and I don't think water would hold it as well as the piping gel is going to. So then we bring our piece back And I'm just going to position this front and center on my chalice. And I'm making sure it's lining up somewhat with the focal point on the base. Just like so. Now I'm going to let this dry a little bit. And then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to paint it gold. 
I'll just show you what the paint should look like before we get to that step. So to mix the paint, I'm sorry for flipping the camera over on you constantly. We've got our wedding gold. We've got our vodka. I like putting, yes, it's labeled vodka. I label everything. I'm addicted to my label maker, actually. I go to my dollar store and you can get these great little squeeze bottles in the travel section. And it makes putting your vodka or your lemon extract or what have you into your containers much more easier than trying to pour from a full bottle. So I've got some vodka mixed in and I'm just going to use my brush to get this to the consistency of heavy cream. And I need a bit more vodka in there. So for it to adhere really well you want it to be like I said the consistency of heavy whipping cream. And you can see right in here, that's exactly what I have. So I'm going to cover this so it doesn't all evaporate. And then I'm going to paint the piece. And when I come back, we'll actually be ready to put the hydrangeas onto the topper. And I'll show you how that's done. Okay, so we're ready to put our hydrangeas onto the chalice now. You can see here, I've got it all painted out and it's drying in the gold. And when I paint, I actually like to use a fan brush. I find with a fan brush, you get a lot nicer coverage, less streaking, and a more even application. And it's fine enough that it gets actually into all the little nooks and crannies quite easily. So then, what I did is I covered my half styrofoam ball in the same gold fondant, just so that if any negative space is there when we put these on, it's not going to um, be as stark of a contrast as one would expect. The other thing we have is all of my pre-made, pre-dried hydrangea blossoms. I did them in plain white gum paste and I've painted the centers in the same wet and gold mixture mixed with the vodka. And to learn how to make the petal ears, they're actually quite simple. Um, Dominic Palazzolo, the creator of Marvelous Molds, the owner, has an amazing tutorial on the website in the video section on how to use the Petalier's mold. This is what they look like and from a sugar flower fanatic like myself, it's my favorite thing to make, these make making hydrangeas so easy. As I, you can see there's five on a mold. I can actually get five hydrangeas done really super easy. So check out his video on how to make them. Uh, he shows you how to cast them how to put them on wires, how not to put them on wires. It's a really informative video. So we've got our piping gel here. We've got a fine detail brush because I don't need a lot of gel on here. And what I'm going to do is just turn my hydrangea upside down. I pre-make these in white usually because they are easily dustable with the colors that I use. So I have these on hand in a container to use whenever I need to. And I just want to go on here. And I'm going to start at the bottom. I'm going to press it on so it sticks, just like so. And I'm actually going to work my way around and then up to fill it up. So I'm going to go ahead and do that, and I'll come back and show you what it looks like all done. So I'm all done adding all of my hydrangea flowers to the top styrofoam ball. I'm just going to let everything dry now before I go and put it on the finished piece. But you can see pretty much there is what it's going to look like on top. I can see in here I've got a little bit of a gap. What I can do to fix that, because it is a little too stark, is I can just take, breakage does happen, always make extra. So I just took one of those spare petals that broke off. And I'm just going to go ahead and, oops. Sorry about that. Dip it into a little bit of piping gel to get some extra glue in there. And I'm going to go in, in and fill in the empty space. So you can see this has a lot of different applications. You don't have to stick with the hydrangeas, even though, like I said, with petaliers, it's so easy. You can actually do this on a larger scale. The craft stores sell larger foam balls, larger foam eggs. 
And just think, you can have like ivy cascading down on the side here with like huge um, domes of sugar roses or orchids or any flower you really want. It's a great way to add a touch of class to any elegant looking um, cake. The applications for covering the fondant in, um, for the chalice are endless also. You can do it in pewter, you can do it in silver, bronze. There's so many different colors out there that are available to you. Um, why not marble fondant? Cover it in marble fondant, spray it with some clear confectioner's glaze, and you've got a really nice looking marble chalice. Um, I would love to see what you guys come up with, so if you can, post pictures of your sugar chalices um, below in the comments. And be sure to keep checking back on the Marvelous Molds website because, like I said, this is for a tutorial that I'm working on proposing to them. I've been very fortunate in the past that they've accepted some of my other tutorials that I've presented to them. And check that section out constantly. Like I said, there's a lot of great tutorials on their website for cake artists, by cake artists. It's really, really great to be able to see the versatility of all of these products. So feel free to check me out on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Periscope. My username's the same on all of them. It's at Morsels by Mark. And let me know what you think about this video by leaving me a comment below. Till next time.